Hi, I'm Jared Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Lab. And occasionally, I want to give you a behind-the-scenes look into what it's like to be a research scientist. And I'm going to do that today and give you some news. Uh, usually, the news out of my lab is good news, but every once in a while, there's some bad news. And I wanted to share that with you and let you know what the implications are for chronic disease. So last week I did video number eight and it was on remote trials. And those are the clinical trials where you can participate no matter where you are in the United States. You don't have to come to my institution to participate. And the reason I talked about that last week is that I knew I was about to hear back on a large grant that I had submitted to run a remote trial. So if you don't know how it works, we run studies by applying for grants. And these are highly competitive grants. We spend usually two to three months preparing these monstrously large 200 to 300 page grant proposals. And then when we're done, we send them off to the funder and we wait for months and months and months to hear back on whether or not the project is going to be funded. Usually only the top 10% or so of the applications are funded, which means the vast majority of the applications are not funded. And all the time spent preparing those grants were wasted. So anyway, I submitted a grant mid last year in 2023 to do a remote trial on lotus naltrexone and cannabidiol or CBD. And I wanted to test these in Gulf War illness. And Gulf War illness is a condition that I think is similar to fibromyalgia, myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, and potentially long COVID. Lotus naltrexone is the pharmaceutical that I still think is our best chance at modulating microglia activity in the brain and having an anti-inflammatory effect in the brain. So that's why I test it. And CBD, as in C CBD gummies, I wanted to run that project because I'm hearing a lot of people claim that it helps especially with pain and maybe fatigue. And I'm seeing a lot of commercials about it working for these conditions and other conditions, but there's basically no scientific evidence to suggest that these things actually work. So there's a ton of hype and very little actual evidence. And I was afraid that people may be taking these products without proper guidance. So, you know, it's pretty clear that people see CBD or some people see CBD as a cannabis alternative, but that's not really true. Um, while cannabis or marijuana, we've known for years that that agent can reduce microglia activity and potentially have an anti-inflammatory effect on the brain. But CBD, we're not sure that it has the same effect. There's very little evidence to suggest that CBD, as opposed to cannabis, actually has an anti-inflammatory effect in the brain. And that's because CBD does not work on the same receptors as the main agent in cannabis, THC, does. So we just don't know. It might, but we have to test it to find out. So I wanted to run a large trial and find out if these products can help with pain and fatigue and cognitive issues and other things. And it's a, it's a timely issue. And given all the hype and craze I had seen with CBD products, I thought we really need to get on this and find out if they actually work in a properly designed scientific protocol. So I submitted the grant, like I said, mid last year, I waited and waited and waited. And then I received word last week and the grant was not funded. Why not? So we get this thing called summary comments. And the summary comments and the scores tell us how we did compared to the other applications and why we didn't get the grant. So it lists the strengths and it lists the weaknesses. Now, this was rated in the excellent category, which is great. Um, I think that's the highest level. So it was very well reviewed. And I think the, the reviewers really liked the idea and we're on board with the plan. But despite that, clearly some other group or multiple other groups had a more excellent proposal or a most excellent proposal that was just a little bit better than this one. And I don't know what projects were funded, but we'll find that out uh, later. Um, I was able to look at 
the weaknesses according to the peer review panel. And it looked like the biggest one they had was the lack of preliminary data for the CBD treatment. And I knew going into it that that was going to be the biggest potential uh, problem with the study because almost always when you do a clinical trial, you want to have strong preliminary studies showing that the treatment is likely to work. And that's because these funding agencies don't want to spend millions of dollars on something that doesn't work. And so they want to see evidence that it's likely to work. And that's what preliminary studies are for. They're, they're tiny studies to just show if there's a signal of interest before you commit a larger amount of money into it. So even with that caveat, I decided to go ahead with it because of the timely um, issue. And I thought that that might outweigh the fact that there's not a lot of preliminary data, but the peer reviewers um, slightly disagreed just enough for it to not be funded. And I totally understand that criticism. If I was reviewing grants like this, I would probably have the same uh, criticism. So what does this mean? This means that this remote clinical trial of lotus naltrexone and CBD won't happen, at least not now, but that means another project will happen. So mine didn't get funded, but someone else's project did. And I hope and I expect that that project is even more exciting and helpful than mine. And we'll find out what that project is. And, and hopefully it's looking at really important mechanisms or really important treatments for the same condition. So what do we do, uh, again, just a little behind the scenes, what do we do when we get these rejections? Uh, you know, we, those of us who've been doing this for a long time, you know, we read it, it's like, sorry, your grant was great, but you're, you're not going to get funded. We, we take a few minutes and we kind of think back and mourn for all the nights and weekends that we spent writing the grant. And then we take a deep breath and we start working on the next grant. And that is the life of the PI. That's basically what we do. You know, because now I know I won't be spending the next few years working on this project, that just means I'm going to be spending my time working on a different project. And that project will also be awesome and exciting. And so that's something to look forward to. Uh, a few implications for you, uh, or, or three implications in general. Uh, the first one I wanted to mention is, this is a small example of why science takes so long to get out effective treatments for chronic disease. So the whole, I think we always say, hey, science is slow, science is slow, science is slow. But this is one good example. This process of me applying for this one grant and hearing back took an entire year. And that's just one small sliver, one small part of the whole process. And like I said, 90% of the applications will be rejected. So if you want to test a treatment, you spend a year waiting to hear if you got the grant. And if it's no, now you've got to rewrite the grant, submit it somewhere else and wait another year. And so you could spend two maybe three years just getting funding for one clinical trial project. And again, that's just one step. And when you add everything up, it's easy to see why it takes 10 years or 15 years to get a treatment all the way to the point where it can be used by uh, patients. The second thing I wanted to mention, and this is mostly for junior investigators, you know, again, us who've been doing this for a long time, getting rejections is not personally offensive and it doesn't really hurt us that much. It's disappointing, of course, and we hate wasting the time because we're really busy, but it doesn't really bother us that much. We know it's part of the game, but junior investigators I worry about because, you know, when you're just getting started in science and you write, you spend three months writing this huge grant and then it gets rejected, that can be really devastating for uh, for a new investigator. And then if they do another grant and it gets rejected, and then they do their third grant and it gets rejected. Sometimes really smart scientists just leave the field altogether. And I understand the thought process behind that. They'll say, look, I'm not going to spend the next 30 years of my life with rejection, 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 and having to beg for money to pay for my salary and pay for my work. I don't want to spend my time doing that process never ending over and over and over again until I retire. And so I think the the life of the PI 
I definitely would not recommend to most people. But if someone is passionate about science and passionate about getting grants and running their own lab, then perseverance is 100% vital. It is a requirement to be successful in the field. So I wanted to note that. The third last implication is um, if you ever see the nonprofits in whatever chronic condition you have, these nonprofits are asking for funding, asking for donations. They're going to DC to talk to the representatives. What they're trying to do is get more money to fund all the excellent research. That's what they're doing. And it is critically important because there's not enough money going into the research for these conditions that we uh, look at. You know, some condition, some, some grants are rated poor and those should not be run. And some of them are rated fair. And I don't think those should be run. Then there's grants that are rated good. I don't even necessarily think that those need to be run. Maybe, maybe not. But the very good grants, we would like to see the very good grants funded because those are very good ideas. And then the ones that are excellent, we definitely want to see all excellent ideas funded. And so those studies can be run. And since we know that there are grants being rated as excellence that don't get funded, we know we need more funding to cover all the good ideas. And that's the work that the nonprofits do. So very important work that they do. Uh, so that's it for this week. Uh, pretty short. Just wanted to share that bit of news with you and kind of give you show you a little bit about the ups and downs of being a scientist. I, I promise whatever I talk about next week, it'll be more positive and it'll be good news because, again, almost everything that comes out of the lab is good news. But every once in a while, there are, there are setbacks and that's just part of it. So I hope you continue to follow my uh, videos and subscribe to the channel and I will keep bringing you the good news. We actually got some great uh, FDA news. Um, I'll talk about that probably next week or maybe in the next couple weeks. So we have a lot of stuff to talk about. So I hope to see you back here then. Thanks.